The African Football Fraternity mourns the death of former Nigeria captain and coach Stephen Okechukwu Kashi at the age of 54. Dubbed Big Boss, Kashi died in the early hours of Wednesday in Benin City in southern Nigeria from cardiac arrest, according to a statement from his family. The Super Eagles team that represented Nigeria at the 1994 African Cup of Nations and the World Cup in the United States is widely regarded as the country's finest team in history. The team coached by Dutchman Clemens Westerhoff dazzled the world with a soccer artistry, winning the 1994 Africa Cup of Nations in Tunisia. Keshi was the team's inspirational captain. For the method that he has done this, Keshi should be immortalized. It's not a player, it's not a, a personality that we just, you know, forget that right, just like that. No, the state that he is for most immortalized. Twenty years after that dizzying feat, Nigerians and indeed the rest of the world still hold the team in high esteem. They will turn the golden generation of Nigerian football. Several members of this wonderful team have moved to pastures anew, but five of its prominent members have since passed on. Uchil Kafo, Rashidi Yakini, Thomsi Oliha, Wilfred Abunabari, and Stephen Keshi. The class of 94 has seen the most successful players and the most successful coaches as well. Maybe not in terms of silverware, you could say maybe the new generation of players are winning trophies, but as a nation, they took Nigeria to those heights. That 1994 Nations Cup triumph saw Nigeria reach their highest ever position in the FIFA rankings as the Eagles were in fifth place. The squad qualified for the Maiden World Cup in the United States and reached the second round. It's wonderful. I mean, the Nigeria is participating in the World Cup. That is something. We're having fun, but the purpose of playing that game is still there. It's top, top of the list. But we just, you know, have fun in playing the game, and, and mostly when Rashidi, the late Rashidi Akini, scored the first goal, oh man, we were, we were out of this world, you know. Um, with due respect to Bulgaria, great players, Stoikovic and Co. But we managed to go through zero. I think that was a great, great moment for me in that World Cup. A year later, after notching up 64 caps in 14 years of service to his country, Stephen Kashi retired from international football. He continued his club career for two American club sites, Central California and Sacramento Scorpions, before hanging his boots in 1998 after a brief stint with Malaysian outfit Palace FA. His 20-year playing career included stints in Belgium, famously with Anderlecht, France and the United States. After his retirement, he moved into coaching and his early results were mixed. He led the Flying Eagles to a disastrous outing at the 2001 African Youth Championship in Ethiopia, where the team crashed out in the first round. He was brought on board alongside Shaibo Amodu and Joe Eriko to salvage Nigeria's floundering World Cup qualification bid in 2001, and the trio eventually secured the country's ticket to the 2002 FIFA Mundial in the Far East. They were weather sacked few months to the tournament for insubordination. He moved to Togo and surprisingly guided the tiny West African nation to its first and only FIFA World Cup qualification till date. Again, he was sacked few months to the tournament. He also guided the Eagles of Mali to the 2010 Afghan in Angola and was shown the exit door after the teams were out in the southern African country. Then, Stephen Kashi came home. Kashi took over as Super Eagles coach in November 2011 following the team's failure to qualify for the 2012 Afghan in Gabon and Equatorial Guinea. Kashi led a team that have a perfect blend of home-based and foreign-based players that fought for each other and became stronger with each passing game. 
against all odd, the team clinched at the 2013 Africa Cup of Nations in South Africa, 19 years after the country last won the coveted trophy. He was voted Africa's best coach for 2013. Kashi, along with Egypt's Mahmoud El Gohari, became a legend that had won the Nations Cup as a player and a manager. Kashi qualified for the 2014 World Cup in Brazil and reached the round of 16 before losing to France. The thing stands sour between the big boss and the Nigeria Football Federation. He failed to qualify the Super Eagles to the 2015 Africa Cup of Nations in Equatorial Guinea. He did not have his contract with Nigeria renewed after the 2014 World Cup, although he later returned to lead the team on a match-by-match -match basis before his tenure was finally ended in July 2015. Keshe lost his wife, Kate, last December after a three-year battle with cancer. They had been married for 33 years and they had four children. Close friends said he never got over the shock of her death. They are survived by the four children. Keshi will be remembered for his exploits on the field of play. His legacy will live on for generations to come as the man that brought a ray of light back to Nigerian football. The big boss, he was fondly nicknamed, but that was because of his leadership drive. A commanding central defender, fearless as a player. His brother and manager, Emmanuel Ado, said not even 10 million soldiers would have stopped Kesh's death. He was scheduled to return to his family home in the United States of America on Wednesday. But he returns to God. Adieu, big boss. Juliet Mafwa. See this in news.